I have tried many different ways to raise seedlings, and absolutely the easiest, cheapest thing to do is to take an old milk carton, cut it in half, and put potting soil in it. I use green, OSU Greenhouse Mix number three for my potting soil and make it myself. Put your seeds in, and if you don't have a greenhouse, don't worry about it. Just put it in a Ziploc baggie, seal it, and put it on the top of your refrigerator, and they'll do just fine. Now, these purple gum phrenia are going to get transplanted once and allow them to grow more before I take them out to the garden. One other recycling technique that I find useful with the other type of plastic milk cartons is to cut off the usable space and make it into very nice little garden markers. Those excellent tips were given to us by Warren Philly of Edmond, Oklahoma. And Warren is our first place winner in category two, which is our ornamental category for our home video contest of 1992. And today we're in Edmond, Oklahoma, visiting with Warren to take a closer look at your landscape. And Warren, welcome to Oklahoma Garden. Welcome to my yard. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Uh, now, Warren, I found it interesting. You have a little philosophy about gardening and your landscape. I'd like for you to share with the viewers what your philosophy is to start with. Well, I really think that gardening is a way to relieve tensions and anxieties, and it's something that should really be fun and enjoyable. And I come home from work, I come here, and I have fun in my yard. And I think you should too. Good. Now, tell us about your design a little bit. You look at it as what rooms your rooms. landscape. Yes, we tell think us of, a little bit about that. Well, we have a room uh, from the kitchen that's a deck area, and it's a place to come and eat and enjoy things. And then there are there's a room that the children use that have some of their playthings, including a uh, a treehouse. And then there's a room that I use uh, with a lath house and. A, and my composter and such as a workroom. And then we have a couple of other rooms with the areas such as a pond where we can go and sit and, and relax on a bench. And really, when you're talking about rooms, you really have them sectioned off. They so are like kind of sectioned off. That's the right. children's area is kind of blocked where That's they right. kind of have their own mm -hmm. privacy. That's right. Even though you didn't mm -hmm. enter the vegetable part, mm -hmm. you have a vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. Again, that's green. It's so, green, so you can't see it from the ornamental area. Right. Okay. Now, You've not really been in this home that long, but was this a several year process? Yes. And, and did you get some help on designing it? Or tell us how the history came about. Well, we uh, picked out the lot and built the house and then decided that along the way how we wanted the yard and in an idea that we wouldn't do it all at once, that it might be too expensive to do it that way. So we do it a little bit at a time. This year we add something, the next year we add something. And we're probably still not done. In fact, we may never be really truly done. but. The, the philosophy was that and to enjoy and have fun doing it and not to be afraid to ask for help from people who are professionals, landscape architects, landscape designers, people that and they have more knowledge than I and that can come and say, mm -hmm. you can't plant that plant there, put this one over here and so on and so forth. Okay. Now a couple of in interesting things I want to kind of highlight that you've shared with us and, and uh, tell us about the trees, how you protected them. Well, we uh, went to the lumber yard and got uh, T-posts and took them out to the drip line on the, the trees that we really wanted to save and went all the way around the tree and then tied rope around that and put big signs and came to the construction site all the time and told them, don't you dare get on my tree. Because that's <laughs> one of the reasons you chose this particular One of the reasons problem. we chose a lot because it had okay. lots of trees and the construction people were very, very good. Once they knew what we wanted, they did exactly what we mm -hmm. wanted them to do. Now you have a lot of perennials and annuals. That's right. And you start the majority of them in your greenhouse. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing there. Well, in the greenhouse, uh, it, that's sort of my winter garden because even when it's rainy or snowy or cold outside, you can go into a nice warm greenhouse and you can piddle around for a while. And you can forget your cares and the telephone and whatnot. And so we'll go in there and uh, during the winter months, we'll raise uh, actually things from seeds and we'll do cuttings and not everything grows and you still have to go out and buy things, but it's just the fun of it. Right, and you, you do think you save a little bit of money that way too versus buying some of the transplants? Oh, that well, that would be true, particularly if you're looking at uh, some things, say geraniums, that become very expensive when you get into larger mm -hmm. size pots. You can actually take the plant in at the end of the summer and let it overwinter, and when you put it out next spring, you'll have a bigger plant, and then mm -hmm. it'll get growing, and it'll be bigger, and then the next year it'll be bigger, and so on and so forth. Now, also I've noticed that not all of what we've seen in your gardens are truly what we would consider annuals or perennials. You stick a few house plants in That's from right. time to time. 
Tell us about like the airplane plan and some of the various ones mixed in the yard. Well, uh, some, of, some of the things that we might do that are rather odd, uh, philodendrons and airplane plants, things that you think of as indoor plants, we'll take them out and plant them in the, in the ground during the summer and use them as ground covers. And then what you want, uh, if you want a few plants uh, during the winter inside, you just bring those in, put them in a pot, and you've got them. And they'll produce more babies over the, the winter months, and then you can do the same thing over and over again. It's an idea that I got actually uh, from an, another individual, and uh, they had done it quite successfully. Mm -hmm. And so just plant your outdoor, your indoor plants outside, and we we did that, and it works very very mm -hmm. well. Now you've uh, used a lot of those types of things to fill in space because you mm -hmm. still have your turf in its mm -hmm. high impact areas, but okay. you're also reducing mm -hmm. the amount of turf you have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I guess, are kind of alarmed at the amount of plants that it would take to fill in that areas, mm -hmm. but. Again, you've shown that over a several year period, it's, it's really not too expensive. Well, and something else that people are alarmed about is when they see a lot of plant material in beds, they say, oh, it's a lot of work. But actually, when you look at the, the time you spend mowing every week, week after week, large yards, and the smaller amount of time you spend pulling some weeds, uh, it, it's, it becomes less maintenance after mm -hmm. a while. Well, uh, Warren, you sent in a great entry with the Thank tape. You. We appreciate that. You've given us some good ideas, and we mm -hmm. want to wish you a lot of success. And now I'd like to present to you our, uh, on behalf of the sponsor for this category, which was Southwood Landscape and Nursery out of Tulsa, mm -hmm. the first place plaque. And of course, yeah. you'll be receiving a $500 shopping <laughs> spree to yeah. kind of help you out in some of your gardening endeavors. So again, we want to congratulate you and thank, well, thank you for you. participating and sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. And next week, you'll be seeing the winners from category three. But first, we want to follow through and show you the second and third place winners from category two so that we don't have to drag hoses around in our old age we installed a do-it-yourself sprinkler system we simply laid the tubing on the ground under the ground cover and connected the sprinkler heads When we need to water, all we do is select a line and turn it on here. Other than this simple watering method and some minor weeding, our garden is virtually maintenance free. We can now spend our afternoons watching the wide variety of birds we have attracted to the garden rather than running the lawnmower. As you can see, our deck incorporates a, a water feature, a water element. Now, a lot of fish ponds and, and different types of water features can be expensive, but to save money, we came up with this idea. We took a conventional horse trough approximately four feet by two feet by about two and a half feet deep. And what we did was we painted the galvanized horse trough with a brown paint. Then we um, inserted it into the ground and surrounded it with a styrofoam insulation. Now the styrofoam insulation is mainly to protect the foundation of the house and not to keep the pond from freezing over. Now, if you have at least 18 inches of pond, it probably won't freeze over during the winter. In our pond, we have goldfish and we have a few minnows, and they help uh, keep uh, the mosquito larva from uh, producing mosquitoes. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.